Hey folks, Craig Labonte here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science and the Beyond Bones podcast. This episode, we're talking to Dr. Carolyn Sumners, our head of astronomy at the museum. She's been there a long time. And we're talking about the new show in the Burke Baker Planetarium, Are We Really Alone? This is a really great episode. Uh, listen to it with headphones on and just really just immerse yourself in three people talking about aliens and metaphysics and emotion and eating in space. It's interesting. Check it out. Howdy, folks. Craig Lavati here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and this is the Beyond, 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 Beyond Bones podcast for this episode. Uh, I am joined by my non-alien co-host, Kat Havens. Kat, how you doing? Hey, good. Totally distracted by the eye in the middle of your head. There you go. Doing good, Uh, doing good. That is because this episode is actually very special. I will go back to my, well, I guess my human form here in a second. (laughs) Well, I mean, fingers crossed or, you know, tentacles crossed. I can't even... There we go. I can't Your touch antenna. my own. The question, Craig, is that are you only seeing with one eye? <laughs> yeah, some days. There we go. I'm trying to touch my ears. I have it. Try to itch my tentacle. All right. Uh, the person you just heard, obviously, is Dr. Carolyn Sumners. And uh, she is our, well, she is just the the star <laughs> among stars at the museum. Uh, this is your third time on the show, I think. Second, third. I, think so. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, but this is a really special episode. Let me uh, now I am distracting myself with my I'm own. completely mesmerized by there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. The cool. Moving. Right. Uh, so this episode is really cool because we are going to be talking about uh alien life and UFOs, and that's obviously it's been a really big deal right now on social media. Everybody is super excited again, as they should be, because we should be thinking about things like this. And uh, Dr. Carolyn Sunders uh, and the astronomy team in the planetarium just put out a new show called Are We Really Alone? Are We Really Alone is the title of it. I saw it yesterday. Really, really interesting. Um, Motivational. I'll say that, Carolyn. It was a very motivational uh, thing. Well, because we'll get to that. But it was very motivational because it's basically you, you, you laid everything out. In the in the show, it's about I guess 30, 40 minutes. No, it's just 20. Is it okay? Well, it felt a lot longer, but that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It felt (laughs) I didn't want it to end. Like I could have gone for two hours. I don't know if the kids in there would have wanted to, but I could have have practiced that before. (laughs) No, no, but I really I really could have watched it a lot. I mean, I you know, I really enjoyed it. It was really good. The presentation's amazing. Um, <laughs> he said it was great. He emailed it's me. I'm, it's good. I, it's good. It's good. It's really I haven't good. seen it yet, and I'm sad, but I will see it soon. There we go. And uh, it's just it's really interesting. Like I said, motivational because at the end, you're basically you lay everything out, and then you go, you know, now it's up to you guys to figure out how we're going to do this. And that's what I got from it. I didn't get like a boo we're we're alone in this world it was more of like well let's go let's go see let's go test this out and it was just really cool i have have avoided for many 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 decades of doing a ufo show because Mm -hmm. i thought fundamentally the problem is simple we can't get there they can't get here Mm -hmm. the improbability level is way too high it's much easier to explain all this foolishness some other way and so then for the first time in the last 10 years, the faster than light drive, the and we create the ship and we warp the, the universe in our planetarium to fit the ship. And we even travel across a galaxy with the ship to show that you can do this. It's only got one problem left, and that's engineering. The physics is fine. Einstein signed off on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we t- takes about the amount of energy the United States uses in a whole year just to turn it on. So oh, wow. there's an energy need, but that doesn't, we th- I mean, to me, that's something you can define and you give enough time. And when you look at the where all the planets are, we have many planets going around stars that are a billion years older than our sun. So are the planets. In a billion years, surely someone can develop the energy to turn on a warp drive. And so that's the idea that, yes, doesn't mean they're any more likely to be here than they were before, except that you can't say they aren't. And you can't prove a negative anyway, but this made the negative much less 
valuable. This is the argument I was going to ask you about because one of my first memories and Carolyn Sumner's hired me many, many years ago. And one of the first and she was having a heated argument in her office about aliens and was telling somebody that it was incumbent upon them to prove something it go ahead and tell it because this is one of my well, favorite you, you, you can't prove well, first of all, you got to remember you can't prove anything mm -hmm. you can't prove that they aren't here there's right. no way but you can prove it's extremely unlikely that they are here and you can say the burden of proof of an observation is much higher than just oh well i don't know what it is therefore it's an alien right uh you have to have much more right now we're saying you really do need uh more, more than one person seeing it you really do need electronic uh photographic whatever as much data as you can about it and then have uh, eliminate all other possibilities for it and there are things that fit that category and that doesn't mean still doesn't mean they're aliens powering ships it just means that it's much harder now i think to say no and then we did a survey of the museum people in the museum one day just ask everybody and a third of them were pretty certain the aliens are here here like matriculating with us well like like on lizard earth. people like like on earth no they didn't they were we didn't ask a lot of specificity here okay uh that gets really complicated <laughs> we just they're, said they're called cats cats are aliens there's no, people we, think, we, not we cat not, not, yeah we specified not, not, in aliens. i am not, <laughs> not an alien you, not you <laughs> Like cats, I've heard people say that actually like, cats, yeah, uh, yeah meow cats. Yeah, are meow. Like, go ahead, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, my husband takes mushrooms, are aliens, so we're in the same ballpark. Oh wow, <laughs> that they're, they're creepy. I will give them that. If the big underground yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that, that's a that's a subject for another show. It's and something. I completely heard you say my husband <laughs> takes mushrooms and that's what aliens. I heard too. That's and what I, I heard like, too. <laughs> what? I was, I was like, "All right, now it's my our speed now." All right, let's turn <laughs> I didn't the music know Gary on. was so cool. And um, anyway, so we 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 really try in the show to to address everything to be addressed. In other words, we address Stonehenge. We go to the Maya temples. We go find Pakal's tomb. Open it up and say, "No, that's not an alien on top of Pakal's tomb. That's Pakal." And. uh we think for the historical material, it's fair to say if we can explain that humans did it or could have done it, most likely did it. Yeah. We don't need to ask an alien to come in and solve the problem. Is that if, the Occam's, not Occam's razor? What is it? It is Occam's razor. It is Occam's razor. That's right. That's it, right. But by far, the it's more likely that the humans pulled it off than that yeah. they had to require an alien who, by the way, left no footprints, handprints. Yeah. Right DNA behind to do and like why is everybody build you know their pyramid structures in a pyramid structure because maybe that's because rocks stay up really well that way. Yeah, it, it's a nice stable yeah. way to build something if you want to last a long time. It's a better explanation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, yeah. the science that the our cultures before us produced is consistent with what they built. Right, and a lot of slave labor. Yeah, for sure, free labor. Labor. Well, even if they paid the labor i got the that. i got the impression while i was watching it and, and like i've always been i i love to be amazed by things and i love thinking about metaphysical things and stuff like that but i also know that i have to stay grounded for a show like this this isn't you know <laughs> I, I was gonna say we're trampling on craig's uh happiness yeah no but it, it is either way i would be very excited even if we were alone that would be really cool. And if we weren't alone, that would be really cool too. If we weren't alone, that would just prove to me just how precious we actually are. Mm -hmm. And that we should treat each other like precious beings that we should be treating each other with. I want to but be alone. Was, but then if we have if we have other folks out there, I almost would be embarrassed for them to come here. You know, like because it's like we're so not on y'all's level, guys. Like, don't even come here. This is like an ant farm. You don't you don't want to, you know, I had a, a quote that I read. I had a quote from an astrophysicist where he basically said that if aliens came here, it would be like the equivalent of us meeting trilobites. You know, we would be that. Yeah, but the the trilobites level. don't think like we think. Even well, humans, we do. Yeah. Humans, we have this amazing ability of thinking that we are very, very evolved and that <laughs> here and now is the best it's going to get. And I 
knowing how old the earth is and knowing like how long we actually have not been here, like as people, as we are all now, all three of us are talking, we're very young. We're very Craig likes deep new. time, Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah. We're very new to this whole planet in the grand scheme of things. And so thinking that now, like we're like immediately, we got to go to other planets. We haven't really even mastered this planet. We haven't, we haven't, mastered <laughs> we haven't been to the bottom no. of the ocean no. in our physical form yet. So they we haven't spent four days on the moon. No, which blows my mind that we still haven't done something with the moon yet. Well, that's just too tempting. And, and one of the, one, I remember one of the first things that Carolyn, you taught me a long time ago was, you know, we've never actually even physically been out of Earth's orbit. No. We've been to the moon, and that's in Earth's orbit. We've never been. Oh past yeah, that, that is in Earth's orbit. Here he could point. I you know, just, like had to process we're not, that. It's, it's a distant satellite. Yeah, <laughs> we've never really gone that far. And as as excited as I am for us to keep going and going, I know that I'm not going to see it in my lifetime. I'm I'm just. I'm never going. Up. I would just like to put okay. that out there. I will do not want to leave this place. My boss wants to send me. Yeah, yeah. Well, Joel wants to send us a lot of places, but we so, haven't talked about a return to the moon, <laughs> Carolyn. To the moon. I maybe one day I'll be like a janitor on the moon. Like I'll be the guy, the lower level, like pushing a broom on the moon. Like I will be. Everybody that is pushing a broom on the moon. I don't want to go to the moon. I think it's dangerous. I'm gonna stay here. Oh, you're a weenie. I totally am. <laughs> I used to go to space all the time when I first worked here. Mm -hmm. We still are going to space all the time. Yep. In the, in the yep. expedition center. Expedition center, which I didn't say because I still want to call it something else. Well, it works as an expedition center. We even, it does. We even have cool. afternoon programs there now every day of the week with interns telling you what it's like if you were to go to Mars. And I nice. saw them. They're awfully cute. They're very What's, cute. What's us? What's also interesting about the the planetarium show, and guys, please check it out if you can. I can do the trailer. You want to show? We'll show the trailer after a while. I want to get. There's a. I have a. There's a thing I wanted to get out of my brain while I can. Um, <laughs> there. Well, You're still way there. Down to have this problem, Craig. I know <laughs> the concept though that you use that really cool footage of Shanghai, right? Mm -hmm. And you said that, and I we know how you got the footage, but we're not going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> and it's really, it's a really great guys, this panoramic shot of Shanghai at night, you know, beautiful that, lights and every, everything. Yeah. And then you're like a thousand years ago, somebody looking at that would not know what the heck that was. They would have no clue. And so I'm just excited to, it's fun to imagine what in a thousand years, what humans can do beyond us right now. We made the movie, my husband and I did. Yeah. And when we sat out on the balcony, I said, this is like, because we'd also been to Temple for it to call. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is just like standing on Temple for it to call. Well, we happened to have animated standing on the Temple to call, Temple for, of the priest holding up his arms like this and looking toward the horizon. Because that's how he would predict the coming of the rains. And so I said, he can fit, he'll put him here. And so I go back to Adam and said, Adam, I got to have the priest here and this version of Shanghai, which was about a two hour a time lapse, which ends up being like a minute uh, <laughs> of Shanghai. That's and it, crazy. Shanghai is a very impressive skyline. We were yeah. looking over the bun and it's it's it's, like, it's an impressive skyline. And it says in a thousand years, we have done so much that we would not somebody a thousand years ago would not understand today. Well, cool. think about it like the Great Wall of China was built in the 7th century BC, right? Around that time. I think I've yeah. got that right. And they were putting it together, mixing sticky rice in with their mortar. And now Shanghai and these crazy buildings with twists that are, you know, yeah. huge. I mean, it is. You're right. It's That's a really. Well, it, it, and Ken, it's, electric, it's, it's the power source. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of this stuff that we've done, even in the 20th century, the communications is awesome and all. But we're still on this planet because of power. Because mm -hmm. we don't fly much faster than we flew in World War Two, and only we a don't. little bit faster than we flew in World War One. So, yeah. uh, a power to move, moving masses is something we don't do any better than we did a hundred years ago, and that's that's a whole that's a whole different thing. That means it requires a new energy source. We can certainly do a lot of cool things with electronics. We can do a lot of neat things with robots. We can do a lot of neat things with communication, but moving mass. Is something that hadn't changed that much. And that has to change if we leave this planet. We need more go juice is what you're saying. 
Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Well, I uh, this is a question I've always wanted to ask you, but uh, this is this is for both of y'all. OK. Do you really think that humans, human beings in our form now will actually be the ones to leave this solar system? Or do you think that humanity is going to have to somehow evolve or sort of be some sort of mech suit type figure going out there? Like, I just don't think that our human bodies can take that. Like we we'll have to turn ourselves into silicone based creatures. Yeah, that's there's that, that's yeah. Carolyn, what do you think? Well, that's that, that's part of the problem. The human body. I can remember in the 1960s and 70s, early 70s, they had all these pictures of people standing on Titan and looking up at Saturn and all this kind of thing, believing Patrick Moore wrote a lot of books on it, believing it's real, believing we could do that. And what they didn't know is the human body is extremely fragile. Yes. Mm -hmm. Much more fragile than we expected. And that we're not going to go into space alone. What's going with us is the plants. Mm -hmm. We have to take our entire ecosystem with us. And that, and we might mention that in the show, that you got to carry all that mess with you. And that's what really gets to be tricky. And good luck getting through customs with the new aliens, because they're not going to let you in with your (laughs) ecosystem and your invasive species. So, but at the same at the same time, are people going to fund um, sending someone? In? I never thought people would really fund the money it would cost to send somebody else's kid to Mars. Yeah, it's my yeah. kid or it's me. That's different. Mm-hmm. So I think that's part of the problem too is how we fund. Now, if we become a dictatorship and the dictator can say, "I want to put all my money into this," then that might make sense. But I'm not sure in a democratic system like we have now. That the resource and the resources aren't there anymore. I don't like that trade off anyway. Yeah, I mean, no, no, I don't either. <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm the res- I, know, I just don't think I think the resources were there at the end of the Cold War. They were mm-hmm. certainly there at the end of World War II. We had the money of the whole planet on a, you know, we had mm-hmm. it because we were mm-hmm. the only people that had survived without hardly being hurt compared to everybody else. And so right. I think now it's a totally different matter. We don't have the money. And, and we're, we're we need to get better at collaborating as, yeah. as a human race in order to get something done. And nobody is good at playing together. And if I'm not going to vote to send somebody else's kid, you know, right. I'm not going to vote to yeah. send a Russian or Chinese. Right. Or that. right. That, was right. Just, that, it was, that was the thought I, the thought <laughs> I had during, during the show. Are we really alone? I keep saying the name. <laughs> I want you guys to all see it, uh, are including we- Kat. I'm going. I'm going. Okay. I have summer campers. I have right summer after campers. this, you go. Come with them. <laughs> yeah, take them over there. I could field do that. Uh, upstairs field trip. It was the whole the whole time I was watching this the the this the show was that the human aspect of this was you know, like you would send generations of people out there. Like say I go out there and then I would have to procreate, procreate. and then keep going and going. You would have all these generations of people, but at the same time human body we can barely handle you know just going i mean some of us can barely handle just regular flight across the country like we get sick and we yeah. get we we, we can't so, handle that kind of thing some of us so can't handle just, six months without being next to our doctor and yeah and, i mean yeah we're, we're gonna say i mean even even going to mars you don't get a doctor for two years maybe too much for most people i don't like the idea of having babies in space that's just, yeah we don't even know if we can <laughs> yeah can fish have babies in space? I feel like we yeah, know. They ever, I think yeah, we know that. We, 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 it's 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 always been a funny topic. It's probably doesn't report to this program, but you know, procreation is is, is tricky. I remember when it's science. We had a bunch of physicists who are very staid and and creatures having a discussion about being on the International Space Station and how do you do things and all. And and, and there was kind of a, 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 a sort of a joke about it. And then one guy says, it's easy, rubber bands. And the entire group stopped. And everybody added rubber bands to the equation and thought, oh. So at any rate, it, it, it's, it's not easy. Nothing's easy in space. It's just, I think that I'm like excited when I see things like VR and AI and stuff that I think that yeah. we could possibly send post biological in- yeah yeah post- mm-hmm. like because I have an Oculus here at home and you know I can go and travel and walk around these these you know sets and places and other things and, and planets yeah and planets from from you know my my living room while my dog watches and 
I wonder if that that's how we're going to explore. So it's going to be more exploring via these, you know, like we already have the lander that's that's on Mars. It's, you know, that's yeah. mm -hmm. the four wheeler that's out there, the dune buggy that's out there, you know, checking things out. That seems to me to be more of the, the, the better option that we're going to have to be sending our technological emissaries for us. I'm back Maybe at not. Oculus. What is an Oculus? It's a like a VR headset. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. okay but okay. that's, that's the kind of thing. Last that, summer yeah. with Mars. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 yeah but like, I just ago. that's what I think is the the solution is mm -hmm. going to be. We're going to have to stay here physically, but our technological emissaries can go with us. And it makes me wonder too: is that work on the other side? Like, are the aliens that we think they're out there possibly? Are they also sending their own probes? Like they're like, oh, we're not. Mm -hmm. that's another that's another thing this is a good this is another good question for both y'all too and especially for carolyn even when we draw aliens or what we think they look like they're always they, you know two arms two legs head eyes nose little mouth no ears for some reason or they have mm -hmm. ears like i had when i just logged in here we still see aliens as a mirror image of us you know, like we can't even fathom what what they would even look like or what if they would even just what, what they would actually be. They could look like yet. us, though, because evolutionarily speaking, if they came from a planet like ours, which is what we're looking for, why wouldn't yeah. they look like us? Because we evolved this way. But we know? can't fathom even what if we can't mm -hmm. fathom what will happen in a thousand years why would we think that we're like still walking around on two legs and two arms and just going hey everybody like well, you would we've yeah. even heard too that even with small changes like with social media mm -hmm. our bodies are evolving now like we all have text neck you know mm -hmm. like we're all our necks are like this all the time we're always looking down or some kids our, don't have wisdom teeth now yeah or we're all being out of certain things our That's brains that is are, the revolution Mm -hmm. is, it, is it our brains don't need to carry so much information anymore so even our brains are sort of getting a little Atrophying. bit yeah because i think that's lazy <laughs> but yeah. everything's on our phone so it's like we don't need to have all this extra wiring that we needed evolutionarily to get to the point where we are now it's almost like mm -hmm. our human bodies we're going to have to keep on evolving to get to wherever carolyn mm -hmm. wants to go carolyn says lazy i say smart Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I, th I think we will go to the moon. Okay. Well, again, yeah, we'll and, go back and, to the moon. And, and yeah. I, th I think what one has to be pragmatic in that, why would we want to go to the moon? Because I think people will settle down to realize that a colony there is valuable. Mm -hmm. It protects the genome of life because we can have every, all of our DNA can be stored on the moon. If we want to go Something mine happens, on asteroids, we need a great a asteroid hits, mm -hmm. whatever happens, or if we do it to ourselves. We can reconstruct ourselves. So I think there's an argument for that. Uh, people who are old understand that concept uh, and their legs are starting to break down and they, they have oh, a hard oh, time oh. gravity. They can probably extend their lives many years by going to the moon because the gravity is so low. I was so, worried about what direction you were going with that, Carolyn. <laughs> I was like, is it like children of the corn? Are we sending no, them to no, the No, no, no. This is like a something. You're old. Go to the moon. You could sell. A, a, it's like the old Earthfall ride uh, uh, hypothesis that the mm -hmm. grandfather was there yeah. to extend his life, basically. I remember that. And and so I think that's a, a viable kind. You know, anything that makes the moon viable, plus the fact we did a bunch of interns and we said, okay, you have to survive on the moon and just spend the whole summer. Whatever you need to buy, here's your colony. It, the colony was designed by the six of people at the University of Houston, and the kids worked the entire summer. I mean, they worried about what they were going to eat. They tried to figure out whether how they were going to feed the goats. It was it was a hoot. The whole summer, you peek in, and they're doing something else. You go, mm -hmm. then they, they decided about halfway through they were going to mine the moon for rubies. And I, or no, is it sapphires or rubies? Nothing sapphires. And I said, sure, call NASA and see if you can sell them. And the guy at NASA said, well, why not? And, Ooh, all, all then, and so at the end of it, they announced all like 10 of them who had done this. And they figured first thing they were going to do is to put their protein farm on the earth. In other words, don't try to grow protein and grow your veg, fresh vegetables or whatever. But your major food is going to be grown on earth and reduce soybeans. Huh? Soybeans. So but or, or, or even even hamburger patties. The thing is fine as long as you're transporting it from earth mm. where you can grow it. 
So the idea is first thing is you put your farm on the earth. Then you so you have to pay to get you have to pay for the to run the farm and you have to pay to get the material to the moon. That wasn't so bad. And they figure out they could sell hydrogen and oxygen and water because they were going to land near the South Pole. So they had all that figured out and how much they could sell it for. And they said, finally, after the whole summer was over in great seriousness, they said, if you can give us $473.82 a month, we can do this. <laughs> this was 80 people living on the moon. <laughs> and I thought, even though that's a ridiculous number, it's a cute number. You brought up something interesting, um, mining on the moon. And we know that there's probably, there's deposits of things there too. But then How again, much? huh? The moon, the moon was kicked off the earth. It's mostly earth mantle. So the salt, it right? the strains of iron and gold and all the things we have on earth. They just so if we care. find gold there, God forbid. Well, we, we're not going to find gold there. But we you want to say, but like if there, say there is even just a resource there that we want. There is helium three. And then we're going to be fighting over that. You know, like we're, it goes back to Kat's point about collaboration. We're going to have to put our swords down okay. and go, okay, we're going to have to. We're I'm telling you fight. right now, too, if aliens come here, they're going to come here to take our stuff. All, Craig, all of us are going to be fighting about stuff. We all I know, are. but like Human that's even. The, since, since one person had two of it and yeah, the other had one. Yeah. But so we're going to have to get over that aspect, I think. No, even make that's it. who we are. <laughs> no, there's no getting past that. I know you have hope, and I always hate dashing it because yeah. you're so you're so good hearted and you're so nice. I'm like that. I think that's biologically so, who we are. Off on a yeah, tangent, Pat, Pat and I one agree of, on that one. One of my favorite shows, and I don't know if I've talked to you about it yet, Carolyn, is uh, for all mankind on on the Apple streaming service, and it's basically about how the Russians get to the moon first. And so we go, yeah. Oh, we got to do that too. And then we get there and we start mining for something on, on earth, on, on the moon. And then there's a resource fight. And next thing you know, there's space Marines, you know, and they're get the Eagle globe and anchor mm -hmm. on the, on the moon. And then now we're, we're fighting. So my thing is that, yeah, we're going to have to put all that down though. Like that's the, that's the part that, like, I mean, I don't know. Do you really want to have like five different countries going to the moon? Like, I'd rather have just like one group of people that, you know, can vibe out with each other and really, you know, get all get along. And then we go from there. Like, I just think that if we're going to leave this earth, okay, we're going to have to leave. Go ahead. At a minimal level, taking mm -hmm. this down to the very basics, Good. you are going to get to go to the moon or maybe to Mars. Mm -hmm. go to Mars. You have five crewmen that are going with you. And you all are going to live in this tin can for two years, effectively. Do you have five people that you can live with for two years in a tin no. can? No. Oh, no. <laughs> there would only be me left by the time we got there. <laughs> yes. Human, humans really have a problem that is our greatest virtue. We are adventurers. We don't settle for much. We get bored easy. We rest us all the time. Yep. That's why we are who we are. To make us become something else so we get along, I think it's not worth the sacrifice. Like Just emotionally, I don't think we could also handle, I don't think emotionally we could handle leaving the solar system because that's a very, that's a way. I don't think emotionally we can handle leaving Houston for a lot of people. I'm not leaving this place. I'll leave Houston. <laughs> I'm not leaving this earth. Y'all go do your thing. You go, no. Send us photos. Send me a photo, yeah, send me bring a me back card. A, bring me a backup magnet from the moon. Yeah, bring me a t-shirt. Carolyn's I, brought I, could, I could go to the moon. I could, I could, if I believe the rocket was safe, I could go to the moon. Carolyn's brought up something in the past before too, that basically the moon is kind of just like space buckies for us, where it's going to be, that's where we're going to stop <laughs> on the way somewhere else. It's the bathroom well, it's, stop. Yeah. I, the, moon there will our, be a the moon is at the space station. I wish, kind of wish we'd done. In other words, yeah. we stopped the moon, we built the ISS. Mm -hmm. I think part of building the ISS was a feeling of distance. What was was false. It's going to come down in, in, in half. A, oh, it'll be down in 10 years. I'll bet you anything because it just can't. The, the metal fatigue is going to get it. Do you yeah. think we did that because we didn't want to fight over the moon resources? So we just moved away from the moon and built well, the ISS? Expensive. It was too expensive to do the moon. Okay. I think I think it was just this. This seemed to be easier. They were, oh, were going to make... The STS, a truck, you know, a space truck, and mm -hmm. we're going to have everything in low Earth orbit, uh, all the in high Earth orbit, and all this kind of thing. And it, it just it was not an economic model 
There Mm -hmm. wasn't an economic model for the moon, and maybe there still isn't. But I think that you could build a a, a space colony on the moon and it could last forever, and it's not going to deteriorate. And people can use it. They have reasons to go there. The tourist trade is what's going to make it viable. I mean, my mom, God bless her, Mm -hmm. uh, died at 97, but she announced before her death that she would certainly take all of her all of my inheritance uh and happily spend it if she could go around the moon so, i love your mom she's she's something yeah oh she was yeah <laughs> i quote her all times to my mm-hmm. children <laughs> but i like thinking about like the like we don't know what's around the corner either and the you in the the show with you show about you show how you have the spacecraft and we're going to have to bend what is it space and time basically mm-hmm. to get from point A to point B. Yeah, we had fun making that. Fold yeah, it. it. You have to really fold cool. it. Yeah. You want me to play that? I should play that part. Play that part. Yeah. Play that part. Play I want to see the alien. I want to see the alien drawings, drawings too. Yeah. So, we, uh, Carolyn, uh, you guys also uh, had some of our summer campers a few years ago draw what they think aliens look like, and well, of course the aliens. Part. Okay, let's see that. Can Where you, you get see this? it now? Am I sharing yes, it? Yes, we can. We can. Huh? Yeah. I can. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to play it. Here we go. Aliens seem to be everywhere. We hear that they're already among us and have visited Earth throughout our history. In the 20th century, terrifying tales included abductions and alien visitations. Movies featured hostile aliens conquering Earth. See, why do they have to be hostile? In the 21st century, our attitude toward aliens has become more positive, even friendly. We ask children to draw aliens and their spaceships. Notice that most of these aliens are smiling. (laughs) Friendly aliens have invaded our movies and even our toys. Over a third of Americans believe aliens are here now. And we eagerly await first contact with any life beyond Earth especially if it is intelligent and eager to talk. But look, everybody's got two arms, two legs, eyes, nose, ears. Everybody looks just like us. Why do we think that? They were drawn by sixth graders. I know, but like, <laughs> but that's ingrained in our brain though. Like, But that. wait, because Coneheads, I mean, we grew up on human looking aliens, right? You have I'm a looking, picture I, of the Coneheads just printed out? I did, I printed it out. I love the Coneheads. You wasted all that ink. Just <laughs> I took it off my wall. I, oh, you see, it's cooler if you just had a picture of the Goneheads on your wall. I do, though. I did. This okay. is from my wall. It, they come from France. They're not aliens. Okay, guys. All right. What are we watching now? I'm going right, to I want to see the part about bending space time. Working on it. There we go. No, you guys are what. seeing the whole show. Don't watch this. You're, we don't want to give anything <laughs> away. Oh, they don't know like, what it is. Okay. Now. I'm going to play it and I will narrate. Turn the, yeah, turn the volume down. Yeah. Okay. We know that, uh, we'll pause here. We know this is a fade between two scenes. We know that mass will warp space. We know black holes exist. Um, and so it's just a matter of having enough energy, which is effectively energy and mass interchangeable, creating enough energy to warp space time. And so we created a ship. That would do that. This is based on the Abicary Drive. And at any rate, the way it would work, you turn it on and it bends space towards you in front and away from you behind. Well, why do you do that? I stopped it again. Because Einstein says you cannot travel faster than the speed of light. We're not. We're not traveling through space at all. We're bending space around us. So that was our plan. These are real stars from our... Uh, planetarium. So I'm going to show you how you do it in case you wanted to take notes on this. When you start your drive up, that is flat space time below. It Mm -hmm. curves in the the material in front of you. You're going toward the right in the screen. It uh, spreads out the material behind you. And the result is, so I had the real galaxy of this. Everybody hang on. Now we're going to make the spaceship a little bit large because after all, we got to see it in this story. This is M101 in case you need to know exactly where we're traveling and what we're traveling through. So here's the galaxy. Now I'm going to go from one spiral arm to another with this spaceship. So there's the spaceship. Once again, a little bit bigger than it would normally be. There's the grid below it of normal space time. We turn on the engine. 
and the space time will be warped. Now, this is actually Einstein approved, as I said. The engineering, we don't have a clue. At any rate, so here we go. Now, how does it look when you really have space time? Well, remember, we were between, we were to the left of the, of the second arm of that galaxy. Now, as we travel through it, the spaceship isn't moving. The galaxy effectively is. Mm. Space is moving around the spaceship. And when it's over with, the result is we have moved. And we can even trot our path from one place to another. So this is the idea that this, this can be done physically. In law, we have not violated the laws of physics. We've gone from the point on the left to the point on the right. What we have violated is any concept of engineering because yeah. it takes so much energy to do this. But it doesn't mean, here's what it would be like to be on the ship. It doesn't mean we can't do it in the future. Now, what would that do to the human body, though? Stretchy. Nothing. You're, wait, you're, wipe, you're warping space. You're not messing with the human body. So it's like folding paper. And yeah. You got stabbing it. through it, right? Like traveling. I mean, you're going from here to here, but I'm just going, we'll just fold it. It's like folding the paper and the paper yeah. touching. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Gotcha. See, simple. Uh, here, here's yeah. the shot. Here's Craig's shot while I'm doing it. Yeah. This is the Temple 4 of, of Tikal. We built it from what we think it would look like. There's our guy. Over, looking over it, and he could with this he could predict uh, the the coming yeah, of the rain. Is. And here he is looking over Shanghai. Yeah. And look at the difference in what he saw a thousand years ago and what he would see today, and how little of that could he explain? He might understand the boats, but yeah. what else that he's seeing would he even understand? And that's what I'm saying about a thousand years from now. I think it's interesting that you um, picked a pre-Columbian. <laughs> And being that they're all going to come take us over here as well. well. I'm not sure what that means. I'm coming back. Yay. I'm going to stop. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. I, like, so when we, if we do travel like that, see, my thing is that how would the human body react to that? That's, but you say that that's, that would be okay. Yeah. Cause you're not, you're not, okay. you're not, you're not okay. warping the human body. You're not, you're, okay. So it wouldn't age us or any of that kind of thing like that we hear or see in the movies, you know, like if you did the space travel like that, that you'd come back and everybody that you knew and loved on Earth would be dead because it would really be all this time later. It's not the same. Okay. It, it's um, it, it's more like Star Stargate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. speak to us in movies and TV shows. Yeah. We can understand that. <laughs> speak my language, please. <laughs> but Stargate creates a wormhole. Yeah, okay. got the wormhole. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. so it, 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 it works effectively the same. So it, it, makes, it makes that really probably the most realistic of all the shows. Because what they did, it, in case anybody's not a Stargate fan, what <laughs> they did was say that, 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 that there were aliens on Earth long ago. They took Earthlings with them to be hosts. Mm -hmm because they were a parasitic race. They took their, and they, they they literally sprinkled earthlings all over the galaxy. And they kept track in worm, in these gates where they were. So every time you walk, you know, you land somewhere, you run into more earthlings. Were they ranching us? Like, were they like, were we like domesticated yes, yes. animal? Oh and boy. Was, well, that's the theory that some people have about us that, that basically we were we had to make that leap and that somebody came down here and sprinkled some fairy dust and then all of a sudden all, us three and four if you include johnny we're talking on zoom so like yeah that we had the, there was like an extra special sauce that had to basically be added to the mix to get us yeah it's 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 it's, it's a religious type thing yeah it's a little weird i'm just um, gonna, i'm I, not well, that's that's the idea that, that that we were we reached a point and then we had to that in order to go over that hurdle yeah. to get where we are now that somebody had to interfere or mm -hmm. not interfere but sort of there was some sort of dabbling give us there. give us supplements or something you guys are good but you can be better <laughs> and then, you know how much of your brain can we still use? I have yeah. interns this summer, and the first thing they're having to do is to fly into the places where we found dinosaur bones because we promised to do a dinosaur show for 10 days. And we're now yep. bouncing around getting it. But more importantly, the, the next project I told them is to, is Earth special? 
we say Earth is special because it has intelligent life. Earth has intelligent life because it's special. Because it has water and because it has and the, all these yeah. elements. Yeah. And, what, and do you have to have water? Do you have to have a temperature range? Do you have to have plate tectonics? Do you only have plate tectonics because you have water? Do you, it just goes on and on and on. Do you have to have a moon? Do we have to have that impact? Do the impact have to be glancing so we got enough interior um, iron that it can stay molded mm -hmm. and give us a magnetic field? Do we have to have mm -hmm. a magnetic field or will we lose our hydrogen? And I mean, water, the, the water planet is not that easy to make. Mm -mm. And Car this is how water. Carolyn exhausts people. There's so many questions. There's always so many questions. So they, they're, <laughs> I said, I, I said, gang, I want everything that's characteristic of Earth. Does it have to happen? Do we have to be in a spiral galaxy? Do we have to be on a spiral on an in, interior of an arm? Does the sun have to be that sun? And because and, and, the sun is not only a single star, it is a star that's not in a cluster either. The sun yeah. is a really isolated star. Is a lot of things happen right for us to be yeah. able to evolve is yeah. basically what, and, yeah. And did, every, and did everything have to be right and therefore we are alone? We are well, it, it, right. it goes back to the whole concept about the um, the last, you know, uh, the crater that killed the dinosaurs, everything like that. If that would have hit just what it, a, a few centimeters maybe to the left, to the right, we're not here. Mm-hmm. You know, well, like more, more importantly, if that crater had, if that place, there were eight places on Earth about that that an asteroid 10 kilometers wide could have hit mm -hmm. and caused the damage at Hulls. Any place else, we wouldn't have noticed it. If that asteroid fell in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, who cares? Really? If tsunami, no one cares. No, very few places could it hit a friable rock that limestone subsurface of Yucatan and be that close to so much land and be able to kick up that much dirt. Okay. Because that climatic is a climatic change that caused it to kill the dinosaurs. And a so per, a perfect storm. It as was a we call very it. rare impact. Mm -hmm. And so we have to really, so I say, okay, so I threw that in the mix too. I said, do we have to have a Jupiter to keep the asteroids away? You know, is, have we really not, because Carl Sagan knew, have knew we would find some level of contact by the year 2000. And we haven't found it now. Well, maybe, so maybe we don't know we found it and we did. More likely we don't because we have not Maybe we, or we can't fathom. That we don't it. know. Or we don't know. Maybe we have, but we just don't realize it. Or maybe it's some sort of other form that's invisible to us. And we can't even fathom. Yeah, well, it's like radio waves are going away. We don't make them like we used to. And maybe radio waves do disappear over time. I mean, people communicate in other ways that don't create radio waves. That's another, that's the concept oh. too, that there's communication levels that we can't even imagine at this point. Like if you were to go back in time, Kat, what's your favorite like time period? What, you like Vikings, right? Oh, I like, I, I would go to ancient Egypt. So you go to ancient Egypt and you show them a cell phone and go, hey, and they go, what is that? you're a witch you're uh you're some sort of sorceress where you know we're either gonna we either we you either are new god is mm -hmm. or you are uh, uh we're gonna go drown you in the nile like <laughs> you, you don't know like uh, what, what would you do and if we were to, i don't even know if if we were to encounter aliens i'm not so sure if humans wouldn't just bash them over the head <laughs> you know, like I don't think I we would actually. The data collecting of museum visitors says most of them would, would shake their hand. <sighs> Not I me. Don't, I don't know. Nope. I, I, it, I, I'm more intrigued, and we've been talking almost an hour about this, but I'm more intrigued by the concept of us going back. I wish that we could. It'd be kind of cool if we. What if we found out that the aliens that we think we're seeing are actually just us, thousands of years from us <laughs> going coming back. And basically going, wow, we used to live in that? Weird. Okay. That either. <laughs> Mom, yeah. I'm bored. Let's go back to, you know. Well, off thermodynamics is what gets that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, the, and it's just, it's, 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 that's why I, I walked out of that show yesterday with so many more questions. Questions, but that's a good thing. And that's why, yeah. that's why we work at the Science Museum. And that's why H. Maness is awesome because when you walk out the door, you're not supposed to have everything figured out. You're supposed to have more questions than you walked in with. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Well, we, and we, that's, yeah. We actually show the UFOs that the, uh, the, we picked one we thought was really quite good, that the UFOs, well, they're, not, they're not UFOs anymore. They're UABs, they're UAPs. 
What is that? Identified for? aerial phenomena. Oh, and and uh, the the Navy and the Air Force are getting serious about it. That we got to know what's what's causing these reports because we're getting the reports more technically sophisticated, more difficult to create in your backyard. And so it's important as they if decide it is to a level of. In fact, this came in the, the COVID relief bill. Had a little thing saying, "Tell us everything you know about the UFOs." And but and, come on now, if they're good enough to fold space and time and and have enough power to turn on their space vehicle, then they can certainly hide from us. No, that's not it. it that we should be investigating. But you're right. We should be investigating UA, UAPs yeah, right. because. We need to know what's zooming around around in our airspace. It's probably another government trying to come take That's our true. stuff. And we should know that. So or it's Elon Musk testing out some sort of new, cool. And that's fine, too. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, that the reports, especially the ones that have a lot of validation of there was something really there. It was seen by multiple people. It mm -hmm. was seen by expert people. It was filmed. Whatever it, it's something that we can't explain, mm -hmm. and they try to explain every way possible. And they talk to Elon Musk about what he's been playing around with in his in his backyard. I bet they did. I bet they do, and that's okay. And but at the end, if there is something strange going on, it, it, to investigate it is much better than not to investigate it. And that's not saying UFOs are here. That's saying people who see things. I want to know what it is. Shouldn't be scared to report them. Yeah, legit. I want to know what it is. If there's something, but could we comprehend that? If it is something otherworldly, could we even comprehend that? Could we even we may, we may make be sense left. of okay, that? If there's otherworldly stuff there, we may, they may be what falls in the other category. But the point is, we'll explain most of it. We may discover some things we need to know that we didn't know that have been hiding around as UFOs, and they really are people spying on us or whatever. That's what I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's horses, not zebras. <laughs> You know, Occam's razor, horses, not it. zebras. Got what it. a philosophical thought. I oh, was that's I had to get in on the it? philosophical deal here because that's usually Craig's purview, but yeah. I just like yanked it from it. That's what Beyond Bones is all about. <laughs> it is. Carolyn is so exciting. She is always fun to talk to. <laughs> Carolyn, uh, let's go and wrap this up. I have a question for you. Okay. What is your favorite movie about space travel? Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, and it doesn't need to be technologically feasible. Just something that when you watch, even now that you go, ah, wow. Well, we, 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 we watch uh, one at night. We, we go through everything. You know, we watch one thing a night. We've, we've gone through all of Stargate, Atlantis. Now we're going through Stargate again. Um, we are doing Warehouse 13, which is that's a good one. I like yeah, Warehouse 13. To it. I just, didn't know you were a Stargate fan. That's cool. That's good to know. It's Eureka, uh, <laughs> which has got its own story to tell. Um, I, we, the, a guy donated to us a life size 2001 monolith. Ooh. It's sitting right outside Adam's door. And so every intern <laughs> has strange. to strange. What is this? It is to scale. It is one by two by three squared in size, and they don't know. And so then I bring out the the uh, thigh bone and said, now what is it? And I raise the thigh bone in front of it. They still don't know. And so I think because 2001 was such a, a that movie was such a statement about what could be and about what might be that, that philosophically, it's not my favorite thing to watch. It was a little bit tedious to watch, but what it said and what it said for its time, I think I put it number one. Especially Yay! coming in when it came out, especially it, with the era that it came out in. You know, yes. like it, we yeah. we had just done all these things, and we had no concept that we were just going to stay here for the next sixty years. Yeah. In context, and it's a very interesting movie about how how they visualized we would do what we would do and when we would do it. And then art, also artificial intelligence and how, yeah. you know, artificial intelligence would be the thing, you know. I have a feeling you guys could go on all no. day. Kat, Kat, <laughs> Kat, what, Kat, what is your favorite space movie? I knew you were going to ask me that. And I'm like flipping through my Rolodex in my brain and trying to come up with a space movie. Um, I, I like the Star Trek movies. Which was the first one? 
Star Trek the movie. Okay, motion that one. picture. Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. Okay, Star Trek the motion picture. Who's your Who's your Who's your cast member? That'll tell us where you are. Oh, I John Luke Picard. That's the television show. I like Next Gen. I'm a Next Generation, next generation type of girl. Okay. okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Had the best cast. That was funny. That was a funny show too. People forget mm-hmm. how it was comedic. It's yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I like Captain Kirk better. No, I like the old episodes too. Yeah, but those were fun and campy. I, I, I didn't and, like Janeway. Okay. <laughs> she was a hard to handle. <laughs> Let's. Uh, so my favorite space movie um, was Interstellar. I could watch Interstellar yeah. every single day. The music's great. It's got Matthew McConaughey. It also taps into the time and space aspect and the emotional toll that it would take on somebody traveling that way. And it's Christopher Nolan. So, of course, you know, I'm a Nolan nerd. So I would go Interstellar. And uh, two thumbs up to Interstellar. I'll have to yeah. check that out. I haven't seen it. We need to show oh, that okay. honestly in the giant screen theater soon. Mm-hmm. That we would really be cool. Do. We need cool. to have a big space movie month or something we'll do 2001 interstellar uh flight of the navigator um just oh, yeah, i forgot that about there. that movie i like flight <laughs> of the navigator all right. <laughs> all right all right guys uh check out are we really alone inside the burke baker planetarium it's going to be showing well forever i'm pretty sure if it's okay. if Car- if carolyn has her way it's gonna be showing forever and uh we'll go and throw the trailer on here at the end of this episode so you guys can check that out and uh, come see the show. And uh, if you ever see Carolyn in the hallway, uh, corner her and uh, talk her ear off about space. She loves it. I'll probably be taking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The rest of just, look, just look for Carolyn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Somebody stopped me yesterday and said, you're Carolyn Saunders. I said, yes. Can I see your ticket? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not to, we're gonna, we're, that's gonna change soon. I think we're all, we're, we're things are trying to normalize, and then you can get back to, to hanging out in your cave down there in the astronomy hall and making things shine. So, Yay. all right, guys, thanks for everything. This has been the Beyond Bones podcast. Check out Are We Really Alone Inside the Burke Baker Planetarium?